Hi, this is a video on how to realize Ferno 1, a very simple realization, no real extra dissonances, just all the key parts from the rule of the octave and cadences. And this is just to help people realize their first partimenti with a model answer. And this realization has been checked by my teacher, who is really a fantastic partimento player. And so I want to help people who don't know how to realize it give them a model answer and explain along the way what's happening. So let's start with bar one, beat one. We've got G, and we have BDG in the right hand, fingers one, two, five, and that is perfectly with the first position of the rule of the octave. Okay, so you're gonna start with B, D, G, and then we go to five, scale degree five, and that has A, D, F sharp, one, two, four. Again, that is exactly like the rule of the octave on scale degree five. So then we go now back to three, and again, rule of the octave, no difference here, but you, what you're gonna do is you're gonna hold your right hand as you descend back to G, because they both share the same harmony, so you're gonna hold BDG on beat three into beat four. Okay, then we go to bar two, we have A, this is just like the rule of the octave, no changes there, C, D, F sharp in the right hand, one, two, four, and then we're gonna go back to G, which is BDG, rule of the octave. Okay, now, four to five, Scale degree four to five, you're going to, on that C, you notice we have A, E, G. That's a six, five chord. That's also rule of the octave, so no difference here, first position. So we're going to do that. And now here's something a little bit different. On the, on the five scale degree, we're not going to do A, D, F sharp. We're actually going to have a seventh and get rid of our fifth. And we're going to double the eight, and we're going to have two Ds in this chord and we're gonna have a C, D, F sharp fingers one two, one, two, four. And that's our simple cadence, and generally speaking, we want to have a seven in our simple cadences, or really all our cadences on the last beat, because it has, has some great color to it, and that's generally what my teacher was saying, you should do that when you're faced with a five going to one. All right, then we go back to bar three, we have G. You notice there's a little five, one there. You wanna pivot your hand, your left hand, so you hit, you hit the G with five, and then you put, you put one as you're holding down five and move into a different position. And of course, since it's scale degree one, first position rule of the octave, we just want B, D, G. Okay, now we go to E with the finger three in the left hand, and this is a special situation, six going down to five. We're gonna use the rule of the octave here. You have A, C sharp, G. And that's perfectly just like the rule of the octave, good voice leading. All right, now thumb goes to D, and then we have A, D, F sharp. This is rule of the octave, and then we're gonna have that special situation, five to four, you're gonna maintain the harmony in the right hand, and go down, while, while holding it, you're gonna hit C with finger two. Okay, so five to four, you hold the harmony in the right hand, part of the rule of the octave. Okay, then, Bar four, beat one, you have B. Again, rule of the octave, you hold B, D, G. And then you can hold that chord as you hit the second beat, G. So B, G in the left hand, in the left hand and you're gonna hold B, D, G in the right hand. Okay, now, beat three, you have A, rule of the octave, back to G, rule of the octave, no difference. Okay, now we have what we have, four, three, two, one. And so this time, there's not a six, five chord on the scale degree four, 
you're actually going to hold C, E, G in the right hand, a five chord, I mean, and you're going to descend. You're going to notice something interesting here. On the three, B, we're not going to do the shape of the, of the uh, rule of the octave. We're actually going to have just three voices in this section, D and G. And what's interesting here is that if you go to the previous chord, you had C, E, G, the voices both sing D at this point. So C goes up to D, E goes down to D, and you have a three voice texture on the third scale degree B. And then we go back on beat three, that's just rule of the octave, and G again, rule of the octave. So that's the end of that bar, bar five. Okay, bar six, we go back to C again, you have a five chord, C, E, G, and then F sharp, you wanna have C, D, A, that's rule of the octave, first position. And back to G, B, D, G, that's fine. Okay, then you want to get the sixth scale degree. Your, you, in your right hand, you'll have B, E, G, okay? Because that's a six, it's not going anywhere, it's not going to five. You can give it just a five chord, so B, E, G. Then we have six, five chord on C. Uh, on the fourth scale degree, you're going to do, again, rule of the octave, ascending, A, E, G. And then you're going to have, this is interesting, you have now of D going to an E, of scale degree 5 going to 6. My teacher was telling me, if you're going to do that, you really should have a full dominant chord in your right hand. So like if you look at bar, if I believe the end of bar 2 when you went 5 to 1, we doubled the D and we omitted the 5th, we got rid of the A. In this situation, if you're going from 5 to 6, you don't want to remove the, the A, you want to have that A, you're not going to double the D, so you're going to have a full dominant chord texture, you're going to have in the right hand A, C, and F sharp, and that's a full dominant chord. This is going to affect the voice leading when we go to E, the sixth scale degree, and voila, we have G, B, G in the right hand, a, big, a bit of a stretch there, so one, two, five, the fingers, G, B, G. And that would be how we would handle that 5, 6 in that situation in the first position. So very interesting, a lot of information there. A lot of small things, but very important if you want to realize 401 correctly. Okay, then we go to the third scale degree. That is B, D, G. Again, just rule of the octave. And this is really interesting. Now we have two, two half notes. We have C and we have D, scale degree 4, scale degree 5. Okay, so you could do the rule of the octave and just have a 6-5 chord there for two beats, but my teacher was saying generally you want to keep having that motion there. You don't want to have a static you know, half note uh, chord just holding there. So what you do in this situation, you have a few options, but here is a good basic one that you can do. So in your right hand, go A, E, A, one, two, five, and then on the second beat, your A is going to go off and G with your finger four and your right hand is going to come down, okay? All the time holding A and E in your right hand, okay? And that's a very nice A to G going on, okay? And then we're going to go on the D, the fifth scale degree, you're going to have A, D, G, one, two, five, and on the fourth beat, you're going that four, uh, it's interesting. So you're going to move two fingers while holding the finger D. So, so basically you're going to have your A going up to C and your G coming down to F sharp while holding D, okay, in the right hand. So on that scale degree 5, it starts off on the third beat with A, D, G, and then while holding D, on the fourth beat you're going to move your A, your thumb, from A to C, and your pinky, your ring finger is going to get F sharp and you're not going to use your pinky on the fourth beat. Okay, then we have a nice dominant chord there, C, D, F sharp, one, two, four, and then you can resolve at the end, back to the beginning, B, D, G. Okay, so I hope that was really useful for you. That really helped me. The reason why I'm pretty confident of that is just, it just my teacher just told me how to do this. And the best advice I can give you is, let's just go through a couple of things you should do. The first thing is you should definitely buy The Art of Partimento. It's a really, I think, crucial reference if you want to be good at this. It lays it out all beautifully, scholarly. It's a book you will continually return to as a reference. So definitely get this book for yourself, for your family, if you want to learn Partimento. Definitely, you have to. Then the next thing is you should join on Facebook, if you are a part of Facebook, join the Art of Partimento group. It is really great. They answer your questions for you. If you have a question, they'll help you. 
and they're very nice and it's really growing by leaps and bounds. So join the Art of Pondermento Facebook group. Uh, a lot of amazing players are there, people who can do some really fantastic realizations and improvisations. You want to be a part of that group. And I guess probably a really important thing is get a teacher. Really get a teacher because that will help you uh, realize these partimenti so much faster and I'm speaking from personal experience here. I was trying to self-teach myself for about six months and I couldn't even realize for no one, which I'm, I'm sure a lot of people who are interested who are checking this out are saying, wow, this is all cool, but I can't even do the first one. So get a teacher, get a really good one. I recommend Ewald de Myra, Nicoletta Paraskevescu, uh, John Mortensen, Tobias Krom. There's a bunch of good teachers out there. So get a teacher, Skype lessons or in person, and they can really help you really crystallize the rules into your hands in a really fast, efficient way, which I hope like this video has done. And finally, you know, if you want to get really more into it, I've, me, myself on the Nikhil Hogan show, I've interviewed quite a few people. And if you're interested in hearing about them and hearing about Partimento and also other things like Solfeggio, Schema, Counterpoint, uh, you can go check out the playlist on the Nikhil Hogan show on the YouTube channel. So I hope this was really helpful for you and I hope you're able to now realize for no one and this is first position. I might make a video if people, if please like this video or subscribe to this video and maybe I'll make a video for position two, three, and maybe we can do all of Ferno and we can start to add interesting things like dissonances and other things as well. So thank you very much and good luck with your realization.